it is time to talk about the division champions of the SEC East for the past two years, the Florida Gators. But if you ask some, winning that division, well, it may be like winning it by default. Because compared to the West, the East just isn't that good. In fact, if you look at the SEC title game, the West champion has won it each of the last eight years by an average margin of victory of 25 points. Wow, hadn't even been close. But for Florida, entering 2017, one area that they know that has to be majorly addressed is the quarterback spot. Because defensively, Florida's been very good. They've been excellent. Been the reason why the Gators got to those SEC title games. The offense, though, has been awful. In fact, they only averaged 24 points per contest a year ago. You can get away with that against teams you're supposed to beat, but when it comes to the big boys, you will stand no chance if you do not have an offense that you can count on. Quarterback, though, like I said, is an area that Jim McElwain has seriously addressed, and maybe they have found the answer in Felipe Franks, a pro-style QB who did not play last year, red-shirted, coming off a nice spring game. They figured maybe this is the guy that can get the ball to the receivers more often. Been a big Achilles heel for the Gators, not getting them the ball more frequently. Uh, in terms of who else can compete for that quarterback spot, they've got several options. Um, Kyle Trask, also a redshirt freshman, played a little bit in the uh, spring game, but right now it appeared that Franks would have the edge over Trask. Luke Del Rio, I don't know what his future holds. Um, played a little bit last year, but has been troubled with injury. In fact, had shoulder surgery just recently and did not play in the spring game. So he's definitely behind those guys in the depth chart. This past June, we found out that Florida has another quarterback, and he's got a lot of experience, and he may be the number one guy. Talking about Malik Zaire. That's right, the guy uh, that used to play under Brian Kelly at Notre Dame, both he and Deshaun Kaiser saw a lot of snaps when they were playing for the Fighting Irish. No question, we know who has the experience advantage, but as far as the Florida system goes, we give the advantage, of course, to Franks. So, big decision that McElwain will have to make as far as that QB position. Running game. Last year was one of the worst in college football. It, it, it was it was flat out horrible. Um, one guy that maybe um, in terms of uh, production can get over a thousand yards is uh, Jordan Scarlett. Scarlett uh, was one of three running backs that saw plenty of touches last year. Had nearly 900 yards rushing, five yards per carry, six touchdowns. Florida, keep in mind, has only had three 1,000 yard rushers over the last. 10 years. So maybe Scarlett behind the veteran offensive line can get to that four digit mark for the season as far as rushing yardage. Speaking of the offensive line, four of the five are back. It's not been an area of strength, but the best of the bunch, fortunately, you lose him to the NFL. That was uh, David Sharp, who got picked in round number four. Martez Ivy, who at one point was the number one offensive line prospect um, in terms of recruiting from two years ago. Well, he'll move from the interior now to Sharp's old spot at left tackle. The other tackle they don't have to worry about, that's uh, Juwan Taylor, who'll play on the right side. Receivers, probably the best in the SEC and one of the best units you'll find anywhere. Antonio Callaway is a big reason why. He averaged 14 yards per catch a year ago. A big-time, big-play threat. But that's on the field. Off the field, Antonio Callaway has been a pain in the ass. Talking about, most recently, a misdemeanor charge of marijuana possession. Ugh. Again, didn't get his act straightened out. You know, Callaway's going to be something else. But off the field, that's a whole other story. On the field, you know that Callaway's going to garner a lot of attention from defenses. And when that happens, that could be Tyree Cleveland's time. Another talented receiver for the Gators who's another deep threat. Other guys coming back in that receiving unit, which goes deep. Brandon Powell, also to Josh Hammond. And uh, Dre Massey, we'll see if the knee holds up for uh, Massey. In terms of the defense, you know, this has been one of the top units in college football, like I said earlier. Um, but there's a double whammy for that Florida D entering 2017. Number one, you lose Jeff Collins, your all-everything defensive coordinator. I know this loss hurts. They lost him to Temple. He's now the Owls head coach. Enter Randy Shannon to replace him. We know Randy Shannon was a former defensive player at Miami and also a defensive coordinator, knows what it's like to win national titles for the U. He also knows what it's like to be a head coach, and, of course, that was a failed experiment fired at Miami earlier this decade. Now he's back coaching the defensive side, but this time for Florida. The other whammy, it's not Randy Shannon. It's losing all those players on the defensive side. You lost eight starters total, and did you know that Florida had seven defensive players taken in the NFL draft. First rounder and three second rounders among them. 
I mean, I don't care who your defensive coordinator is. That is very difficult to replace. Not only did you lose eight starters, but almost all those starters were NFL draftees. So that would be a tall order to ask of Randy Shannon or anybody to get that defense back up to the level where it left off. I'm not saying they'll be completely bad, but the defense is not going to be the same in terms of the talent and experience. There's no doubt about that, and it's going to show a little bit this year. Um, C.C. Jefferson, they're hoping could be that next uh, terrific pass rusher for the Gators. They've had several of them in the recent past at the defensive end spot. Remember, the Gators last year had 31 sacks, but only four of them came in the four losses that they sustained. Now, middle linebacker, of course, they're going to miss the first-round pick in Jared Davis, but they do have David Reese with some experience back at middle linebacker. Um, as far as the secondary, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a drop back. I mean, you lose Marcus uh, May, you lose uh, you lose uh, Quincy Wilson, and you also lose Tease Tabor, all three second-round picks. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a decline. But they've got guys with experience. The only uh, full-time starter back in the secondary for the Gators, uh, that would be Marcel Harris, had 73 tackles a year ago, one safety. The other safety... Uh, you have Nick Washington, and a guy that could be all SEC this year, he's that good, is uh, Duke Dawson, who saw playing time a year ago at the corner. Now, as you look at the screen, you're going to see two fantastic special teams gyms, and these are weapons. Place kicker, you look at what he did last year, the punter averaging over 47 yards per boot. That could be a major difference maker in those close games down the stretch. And, of course, Florida, you count on a team that could be electrifying as far as returns. Punt and kick returns, that's where Antonio Callaway could be a, a game breaker. A couple years ago, had two uh, returns for touchdowns. Now let's look at the schedule. They'll begin the season with a neutral site game against Jim Harbaugh and Michigan. Last season, these two teams were the top two in the country in total D, but both have lost a lot of talent on that side of the ball. The other neutral site game, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, but that's not until October 28th. When you play hated rival Georgia and head coach Kirby Smart, who's been recruiting very well. Only three true road games this year for the Gators, and all three are winnable at Kentucky, at Missouri, who's terrible, and at South Carolina and former Florida head coach Will Muschamp. The home schedule, I'm telling you what, if you are a Florida season ticket holder, you're going to love it. Tennessee, LSU, Texas AM, and at the end of the season, Florida State, all four of those teams have to come to the swamp. Big, big advantage right there. Matter of fact, the LSU game was supposed to have been a road game this year, but because of weather, last year's game got switched to Baton Rouge, so this year's game is in Gainesville. Do I think that the eight-win Vegas projection is too high or too low? Well, actually, I think it's fair. I think it's pretty much accurate. I'm going to go eight wins. I do think the offense will be a little bit better, especially at the quarterback position. Defensively, though, like I said earlier, it's an awful lot to ask of Florida, who's been statistically one of the best defenses in the country, to be able to pick up from where they left off when you lost your valuable defensive coordinator, as well as most of those starters, seven of which, which were picked in the most recent NFL draft. Florida will contend in the SEC East, but they will not repeat as division champions. That's my look at the Gators. See you later.